Oh, this is the first thing I've ever felt that makes the Timberwolf feel light. <laughs> it does. It's so nose heavy right now. I mean, it, it feels like uh, there's no power head at all. <laughs> 36 inch bar, 59 cc saw. Now this saw right here, if you don't watch the channel, it is slightly modified. All right, what I have is a 620 coil on it. I have a 620 carburetor on it. I also have a muffler mod. That's it. Other than it being broken in, that's the only performance op options this has. Well, it does have a kit too from uh, Gearhead Performance. Matt Robinson is his name. Look him up on YouTube. Uh, these things, the filter gets lets fines through, so you need these O-rings to go on there to help seal it up. But that's it. No real modifications. It has not been ported and polished. It still has the base gasket, everything, you know. So let's see how it pulls it. And that is why I constantly tell people, this has no competition. This chainsaw has no competition. There, it is absolutely, hands down, the very, very best chainsaw that you can buy for the money. It is absurd how good it is for how much money you have to spend to get one. If you wanted to buy this thing brand new, they're still going for like right at 400 bucks at Home Depot. Right at it, you know, something close like that. Um, and that's with a 20 inch bar and everything. Uh, but I buy them used off of Facebook Marketplace. It's very easy to find these things. Um, very easy to find these things as store take backs and things. People buy them by the crate where you know they sell them from the home depot sells them to wholesalers or some something like that there's some kind of dealio and i bought this one but i did not buy this one actually off of a wholesaler i have two others that i bought off wholesalers or whatever you call them i don't know but this one i bought off of an individual that had it used it for one job he did not even run an entire gas tank through it then it sat on his garage floor for two years before he figured I'm gonna sell that saw. And I got it for $225. So as far as the power head goes, now I did do upgrades to it, but they didn't add that much power. The 620 carburetor and the 620 ignition coil did give it a little bit of oomph, but I don't think that they're worth the money unless you are going to further port and polish the saw. Um, which I am definitely going to do. So if, if you're not going to port and po polish it, then I don't see the point of it. And if you are going to port and polish it, like pay somebody to do it, it might be better just to go ahead and spend the money for the 620 because, you know, but I got this thing, I, I got a good deal on it. I like, you know, it was 225 and then later down the road, I spent a hundred bucks for the carburetor-ish 
75, something like that for the carburetor for a 620 carb. And uh, then a little down the road, I spent, I think it was like 140 bucks for the ignition system, the coil for the 620 to upgrade it. And so buying it step by step like that is, you know, it's nice. So you, you can continue to play with it and you're not taking that $400 hit right off the bat. So it does have that as a benefit over the 620. Um, but the 620 is a better saw. It has a better cylinder set up. They're very similar, very similar, but this is the, uh, <clears throat> this is the economy version of the 620. A lot of people say it's a pro saw. I say it's semi-pro and there's a bee flying around me. But this is the Dire Wolf folks and it just pulled a 36 inch bar through some serious oak. Will a 590 pull a 36 inch bar? Yeah. I mean, the muffler mod and all and the carburetor mod and everything made a difference on this for sure, for sure, big one. The muffler mod was by far the biggest advantage it, that it has by far you know but still i haven't opened that thing up i run a 22 inch bar on it regularly and uh it really pulls that without any problem heck it it did good there with a 36 incher did it beat the 660 nah i don't think it <laughs> no i don't think it even came close as soon as i put it in the wood it felt different felt like it just wasn't digging in but that's the same chain and it's still plenty sharp you know it's still a plenty sharp good chain sure enough but uh, yeah it just didn't feel like it had the grab and everything that the bigger saws did but can you make it work yep I don't know for how long <laughs> but yeah And here we are with the 22 inch bar. I know you guys have, that watch the channel have seen this a lot, but this video is showcasing. I want to lean it out a little bit, but I left my screwdriver, but it's clearly too fat. Are you with me? That power head, I, it, actually it came with a 24 inch bar. It came with a 24 inch bar because the guy had special ordered it. Uh, it came with a 24 inch bar. Now if you look back on my videos, you'll see that whenever I had it completely stock and it was unbroken in, I was like, eh, I don't know. It's not that powerful. But these saws really come alive whenever you break them in. And uh, you gotta be able to tune that carburetor. You gotta be able to tune that carburetor. Don't think that you can buy something and just, you know, expect it to be perfect from the factory. It ain't. You've gotta adjust every one of them's carburetor unless they're an auto-tune or uh, M-Tronic saw. All right, so you have to get familiar with how to tune a carburetor. Um, also, you've got to get the limiters off of there so that you can properly tune it. There's a lot of stuff, and but it really came alive whenever I did the muffler mod. I did the muffler mod and the carburetor mod at the same time. Look back on my videos. You can find it, the Echo 590. Just type in, just type in novice lumberjack Echo 590, 
you'll probably be able to find all of my 590 videos. And uh, <laughs> whenever I first got it, I was completely unimpressed. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good saw, you know. But it really wasn't much different to me than a 460 Rancher, you know. But then as I kept using it, it started breaking in. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then, you know, I modified the muffler. I modified the carburetor. Then I went the next step and I put the 620 carburetor on it and the uh, 620 coil. And <laughs> it is excellent. Nothing can touch it for the value. Excellent. I love my Dire Wolf. And that's why I went ahead and purchased a new Sumura 22 inch bar. Isn't that pretty? Man, she's a nice saw. Nice, nice saw. Is it my favorite? Johnson Red's still my favorite, baby. <laughs> so what does this mean? Does this mean that the uh, that the 590 Timberwolf that doesn't have anything but basic mods does it is it faster than my John's Red 2258 that I've actually ported? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Um, that's a little bit of a hard pill for me to swallow, just like you steel guys out there seeing the 400 get beat. Um, but uh, these were two very different days. Um, and as you see, I, I wasn't cutting in the same manner, you know. The Timberwolf was running too rich, and so I was burying that bar. I was digging it in. Um in order to get it to lean out and maybe that helped it go faster it's been my it's been my experience that whenever you dog it in like that it actually slows it down um there's a there's a balance you can't you know but i do remember whenever i was running that 2258 and uh on that day uh, i was just enjoying it letting it dig and and just let the rpms ride through and just try and let it eat through you know um maybe maybe all of the maybe the reason the 2258 lost was because of my cut technique it being different you know or maybe it's because the 590 is actually faster now again the 590 is not stock but neither is the johnson red the johnson red i've actually ported and it's running a um um a pipe exhaust and not a not a muffler mod it's running a pipe exhaust exhaust and uh, so you know but is the johnson red broken in nah the echo is echo is definitely broken in that johnson red is not i at most at most three tanks on that johnson red johnson red but I don't think so. I don't think I've ran three tanks through it. Probably more like two. So, um, yeah, it's not broken in. But look at me. Here I am making excuses, right? It's very possible that that Echo just flat out beat it. And all that is, there's no, there's no base gasket delete. There's definitely no porting and polishing. All there is is the... Um, I'm flipping you off. The... Echo 620 carburetor, the Echo 620 uh, ignition, ignition coil, and a muffler mod, and it's well broken in. There's about 15 tanks probably through that through that uh, Timberwolf, maybe 10, 10 to 15 tanks through that Timberwolf. 
Um, but and from my testing, the addition of the carburetor and the ignition from the 620 only gave that uh, that Timberwolf. It only gave it about you know two seconds more speed in a in this cut in this log this log right here. Um, typically, I'm with that saw right there, and this is why. That, <laughs> I've got uh, I've got footage of in the past this exact same saw running um, you know 21 22 seconds through that log so but that was with the steel RS chain and now I've just upgraded to the Husqvarna uh, C83 chain on it and the the Johnson Red is running a brand new uh, C83 3 chain as well hey there's only way to, one way to actually settle this, and that is to do a proper whack-off with them now that in their current state. Uh, but I, I, I can't do that because I don't have any good whack-off material. <laughs> I, I, my big oak cant is all used up. My 14 by 14 oak cant. But hopefully I'll be getting another one here soon. Um, and... Yeah. Enough for this video. Later.